extremely elementary, so I don't really need 45 minutes. So if you have questions, please do ask. So first of all, I'd like to summarize what's known about the BPS sector of the system. So this is actually uh, uh, fit very nicely with uh, Don Zagier's talk that we just uh, heard. And we had a very much pleasure of listening to his presentation. And so I'd like to make use of some of the terms. So I would like to consider n equal to supersymmetric sigma for the good target spaces carry out d form, d complex dimension. All these theories, two dimensional uh, conformity theory, have symmetry, very large symmetry of n equal to super conformal algebra, super Biasolo algebra, where Biasolo generator, which is uh, 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 with additional supercharges and the one charge. And on the top of that, this carabial manifold has unique holomorphic d forms, which implies that there is a symmetry in the Hilbert space called spectral flow, which is very important for the space-time supersymmetry, for example. If you then use this theory to construct a string theory model, then this is closely tied to supersymmetry in the target. This enhances this uh, uh, worship symmetry. So what we have to consider Carabial 2 fold, which is K3, then this n equal 2 super symmetry is enhanced to n equal 4 super symmetry. So you have a solar generator, instead of one set of supercharges, you have two sets. And then, instead of just one current, you have SU2, affine at Moody algebra. So you have an enhanced symmetry. And then there are similar stories for other dimensions, too. So this is going to be enhanced. And I would also like to point out that this is a symmetry of the theory so that in the Hilbert space can be decomposed into some of the reducible representations of this algebra. But on the top of that, for physical conformity, you say there is a left moving sector and a right moving sector, namely holomorphic sector and anthropomorphic sector. So that means that you actually have two copies of these uh, uh, generators. So that means that to represent a Hilbert space of this conformity theory can be decomposed into sum of products of representation of these product I mean one for left mover and the one for the right mover. So this is a very important point that I will exploit. I would like to briefly tell you what kind of representation we have in mind. So, basically, highest weight representation that we are interested in highest weight state, which are narrated by this positive frequency mode of the super Solo algebra. I'm using n equal to notation. Highest weight state is an eigen state of L0, which is delta. This is a delta that came out in this summary here. So, this is a left moving part of delta. And then there is another copy here for the right meter. And it's also eigenstate of J0. So delta and Q are mean. Unitarity of the representation, namely that the representation having positive definite in the product requires the delta being greater than half times absolute value of Q. When delta hits half of Q, you have a possibility of having higher representation or BPS representation in uh, the terminology that has been used in this conference. So those are, have additional features that they are highlighted either by this one or this one. Sometimes one of them is called BTS and the other is called anti-BTS, but I'm just going to call them BTS. And there, delta, the eigenvalue of delta naught, is related to exactly equal to half of Q. And so that means that uh, if you have generic representation where delta is greater than half of Q, and if you lower its delta to, the, to, to this band, typically, irreducible representation of this type becomes reducible and becomes some of these higher representations that I will show you uh, in the next couple of times there. So these are kind of, so today I have to add the other generators to grow the entire representation. <coughs> so as I said, this is a symmetry of the theory, so that means that Hilbert space can be decomposed into product of representations of this type. Explicitly, we're going to use two types of representation corresponding characters. And uh, so this is for n equal to 2 algebra, but it's going to be extended by spectral flow. And this was studied by Odake in 1990. This is what his PhD is. And uh, uh, so for chiral representations, there are actually for d-dimensional chiral there are d inequivalent BTS representations. With all of which is delta equal half of Q, and Q have D choices here. 
and no BPS one, there are D minus one irreducible, so that it's an inequivalent representation. And again, delta is greater than half of Q, etc. I'm going to denote the character of this by chi, just because this is higher, so I call that as chi, just to remind myself. And then no higher mass characters are denoted by CH. As I said, there's a relation between higher representation and non-higher representation. If you start with non-higher representation where delta is greater than half of Q, reduce delta so that it meets this bound, then it can be decomposed into some of uh, higher representations like that. And this combination is dictated by the fact that uh, it is exactly this combination in which we can index dynamics. For higher representation for BPS representation, we can index is non-zero. And these are the formula for the weak index for higher representation, or BPS representation. And if you take this combination, they cancel out. As it should be, if they, as they should be, because uh, massive or non-higher representation has no weak index. Is this notation, are these notations clear so far? Because I'm going to use this for the rest of my talk. Sorry? D is a dimension, complex dimension of Calabria mantle. So it's a proportional to the central charge of the Dirac value. Now the partition function of the Hilbert space is, as I said, the Hilbert space is decomposed into some of product of representations, n equal 2 on the left and n equal 2 on the right. So we can expand the total partition function of the theory by some over this kind of thing where you can have a sector where both left and right moving sectors are BPS, called half BPS. Or you can have a situation where, where the right mover is BPS, but the left mover is not, or the other way around. Or you have a situation where both left mover and right mover are non-BPS. So there are four sectors like that, and I would like to go through each one of these sectors. First of all, this uh, half BPS sector, how the BPS sector is completely controlled by classical topological structure, the Hodge number, or Betty number, of the Calabria bundle. So you can be, so first of all, there's a unique ground state, Q0, chi0 is a character of the ground state. So this multiplicity is known to be 1. And then you have this kind of summation where these are related to the Hodge number. Just as an example, if you choose Calabria 3, 4, this sector, Function function can be expanded in this way where this is a ground state, there's a unique ground state, and then the proportionality constant, multiplicity of this is related to H11, multiplicity of this is related to H21. There is no cross term like that for compact Calabria manifold, otherwise, the, uh, well, actually, you can prove that there is no such cross term. So that's this sector, this is the simplest. Now, let me move on to the next sector. This crossing term, this is essentially the complex conjugate of this, so they have the same structure. So this has a structure that we have a mi mixing of chiral or BPS representation and non-BPS representation. And it turns out that this coefficient here is essentially determined by the elliptic genus of the Calabria of Michael. Elliptic genus is defined in such a way that you choose this sector, this, this, you replace this by written index and uh, uh, compute the same thing. You can do that by noting that uh, if you, you know, these term theta are the same term theta that appears in Gonzaga here. So, where e to the uh, 2 pi i tau, which is q, measures the number of, that measures the eigenvalue of L0, and theta measures the eigenvalue of J0. And since you have left mover and right mover that are both hormotic and non hormotic anti hormotic component, you choose theta bar in this, in this value, and what it does is effectively turn this character, BPS character, into weakening. So if you do that, this becomes, of this form, this looks a little bit messy, but what it is is that it's a hormotic function of tau and theta, and it knows about this kind of multiplicity function, and uh, by the modular invariance of the action function, which is required by consistency of the conformal view theory on two-dimensional force, you can show that J is a weak atomic form of weak Great cell and index D over 2, where D is a complex dimension of the Calabria manifold. Great thing is that space of such weak diagonal form is unique. So that means that if you know first few expansion coefficients of J, it's uniquely determined, and therefore all these coefficients are essentially determined. And this is very useful. 
So let me give you a couple of these examples. So first example is the case of cardinal 24 or K3. And in that case, in fact, it is totally determined by solely by the fact that there is a unique vacuum in the system. So that fixes this to be 2. And then the rest is uniquely determined. For example, this 20 is totally determined. And 20 is related to the H11 of K3. And all these are, are related to some higher homology. So it was actually my PhD thesis, which those are here in to in this talk about the representation of character of any core representation. The interesting thing is that, for example, this chi naught and chi 1 are related, expressed in terms of Appel Lebsche sum. And I think that was the first instance where Appel Lebsche sum and uh, modular forms appeared in physics literature as far as I know. And I was curious to know that uh, 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 this property of this number, which is what I did in my PhD thesis. And to my surprise, all this came up positively here. In principle, since it's related to input index, it could have been negative. But one can, one can be used that if there were a negative number, then symmetry of K3 sigma mode is generically greater than A equal 4. And the fact that all these are positive integers means that there is no generic symmetry enhancement. So the positivity of this integer has a very interesting property. So I was actually fascinated by this number for many years. And just a couple of years ago, uh, I was uh, uh, meeting with Paul Eguchi and Yuki Tashikawa. And Eguchi had this obsession about M24 symmetry of K3. So we talked about this, and we thought maybe this number has something to do with that. And fortunately, on my laptop computer, I have the German Mathematical Society edited the encyclopedia of mathematics. So we looked it up, and then they noticed that all these numbers are actually dimensions of the reducing representation of M24. And uh, so I just leave it like that because there probably will be some talk about this later today. But uh, I think this is a very curious part uh, that should be telling us something interesting about case history. But I move on to the case of Calabria 3 <coughs> So Calabria 3 it is a special feature of Calabria 3 for any odd dimensional Calabria manifold, is that index of the vacuum representation is zero. So it, it actually starts with uh, uh, a non-trivial chiral primary state, and then also some over um, uh, non-chiral state, non-DPS state. And since the, the dimension of the corresponding relevant Jacobi form is still one-dimensional, so that means that this Euler characteristic of Calabria 3 form totally determines the normalization of the Jacobi form. So therefore, the, 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 the elliptic genus has to be proportional, proportional to chi, the uh, Euler character, and uh, times the basis. Okay, so for a long time I thought that example, in this case elliptic genus is not that interesting because it doesn't contain uh, as much information as K3 case, okay, but, uh, but I was wrong because it does tell us something interesting, which I will explain, which is a point. That, uh, so this is, it turns out that this first term here is actually it by itself the Jacobi form which I do not know for a long time. And uh, so what it means is that all these terms should not be zero. So namely that this should be zero, this should be zero. So that means that these are zero, these are equal to zero. So that means that, in fact, uh, as I, even though I said that uh, we are talking about the mixing term of non-BPS and BPS state, but if you have this property, what happens is that BPS state combine into non-BPS state altogether. So essentially we can say, cross term is equal to zero in this case. So that's a very not real thing that comes out from this kind of problem. But, but I said generically, because the reason is that, uh, uh, that we cannot exclude the possibility that we have this kind of cross term, where cross term is a vacuum representation, because the index of the vacuum representation is zero. So even if there was such term, cross term is not have shown now in the uh, uh, elliptic genes. But if you have such terms, that means that you have an enhancement of symmetry on the world itself, which would not happen generically for Calabria sigma. So for the rest of the talk, I will assume, I will consider a generic case where there is no such mixing term. But in fact, it's not so difficult to generalize or extend our result in the case where this is not equal to zero. But for in the interest of time, I'm not going to discuss it. But this, this can be done. But that doesn't change the balance? Not very much. So, so in, in case you got lost during all this discussion of elliptic genus and the uh, uh, Lebesgue sum, etc., so I'd like to summarize what we have 
Thank you. 
I'm just rewriting this equality in terms of uh, each character and you can express it in this way. Sorry, this is the one. And uh, we can show that G not so, so every, all, every function is known, although it's expressed in a rather awkward way in terms of Apelo and Shesam. But you can show that G not not is a positive function, all positive uh, x greater than 1. G11 is negative, so we know that this contributes positively, this contributes negatively, and this essentially follows from the observation Greg just mentioned. For this dimension, dark in representation contributes positively, and this contributes negatively. How about this gamma thing? Well, gamma depends on actually the highest way of the mass and non DS representation. So I'm going to define, so basically what happens is that when delta is small, this is positive, but when delta gets large, it becomes negative. So I'm going to define some function which distinguishes the value of delta, which gives you some kind of boundary value of delta, which distinguishes positive gamma and negative gamma. So I'm going to define s of x as a function of x as supremum of delta plus delta bar, for which this is positive for any q and q bar. So that's the definition of s of x. So then you can show that uh, this equality can be turned into this inequality. Because if you restrict, so this is sum over all non-BPS representations. But if you restrict your dimension to the s of x, delta less than s of x, they all these contribute positively and what you are neglecting are negative contribution. So if you ignore that, you can get an equality like that. Where well, this is positive, this is negative, so I put out the value to distinguish this one. And the next step is now to estimate this function. And we can expand it in the first few terms and easily come up with an estimate that this is already always bounded by this kind of uh, exponential function. We can improve this further by going to higher expansion, but uh, for the purpose of simplicity, let's stop here. Then you can prove that this equality, which turns into this inequality, can be further simplified as this kind of inequality. Because now you are replacing this by the same function. So essentially, the left hand side is not just counting the number of uh, possible representation, which is bounded by S of X. So now we can give a lower bound for a number of non dps primary states with low dimensions, expressed in this way. And so here, essentially, is an explanation of our result, because if you look at the right-hand side, you have something which is proportional to the sum of total Hodge numbers. So you see that the number of states like that grows linearly in Hodge numbers. So this is already showing that we are getting this. So now this inequality is true for any x. So that means that for each x greater than 1, you get some bound of the number of representations. So we can try to evaluate it at, the, at your convenient places. And so we, we, we try that at two convenient places. That does not mean that we have gotten the best bound, but we did get some bound. And uh, so let me show you what that is. So, so this is an inequality. So remind you that S of x is defined to be supreme of delta plus delta bar where gamma is positive. And so, so, so this is actually very, so something that you can evaluate very explicitly by using the representation of n equal to characters, uh, n equal to algebra. So this is a very well-defined set of a uh, 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 well-defined number, and it's bounded by that. So that means that for such, so oh, this is already, I already said, but for large h11 plus h12, this gives no trivial constraint. So let us study its consequence. We can do that for any x, but let's check it at these two limits. First, x goes to 1. At x2 goes 1, in fact, s of x goes to 0 0.6555. That's roughly 2 stars. Two and uh, so there we find that the uh, non tidal primary with delta plus delta bar less than 0 0.655, etc., is greater than numerical number times the total host number minus 492.6 dot dot dot. So, th so this inequality is meaningful for a large host number Carabiao whose size is greater than 493. And this, uh, as h is greater than that, as host number is greater than that, number of non parallel primary with this kind of very small conformal way grows linearly as a function of the host number. 
Now, uh, what if Taylor and Ben Morrison, uh, I believe, I don't know exactly who are the uh, co authors, have some interesting results uh, about the global bound on the total Hodge number of elliptically fiber cardiac microbes? And if what is here, he can shout out what was that number? Yes, it's 494. That indicates that there is at least one example. <laughs> Yeah, so that means that H21 plus H11 is, I think in your case that H11 is like 11 or something. Yeah, so, yeah, so I don't know how to prove around on H11 plus H21, but for looking to fiber, there's an upper bound on H21. Right, right. so there are examples like that, but in fact, the interesting thing is that at least for elliptically fiber the part of the other manifold, this is on the path of getting to the maximum bound. I don't know, of course, I mean, there are many no, cardiac which are not elliptically fiber, so if there is a band that maybe that can be larger than that. But the interesting that the 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 the, 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 the number where this kind of uh, uh, inequality start kicking in is close to the maximum amount of what numbers that you can possibly have for this type of the elliptically fiber. <coughs> and since they are on the number of such low line stays low. Okay, so we can also look at the other limit, and if the other limit the bound is uh, actually a bit, bit uh, much better, because SEP is now shorter rather than two thirds. So you can show that uh, asymptotically uh, that it's gonna, uh, you're going to have lots of states whose conformal weight is now bounded by quarter. But but in, in order to achieve that, you have to have a very exponentially large point now. You have to must exponentially large. So that's uh, that's. Uh, Okay. And uh, you can, of course, scan the intermediate region and see what kind of the best bound you can possibly get, which we have not done so. There are alternative approaches to this kind of program, which was actually pioneered by Shibion Pelaman. And there, he actually noticed that uh, if you parameterize uh, uh, the uh, modulus modular tau, modular tau uh, 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 then if you uh, express it in terms of S, then the modular invariance can be expressed as a reflection of S. So that means that if you take one derivative of Z and evaluate it as S equal to zero, namely tau equal to I, or three derivatives, they should all be given uh, zero. And that can also be uh, thought of as a consequence of the modular invariance. So we can try a similar thing in our case. So, so here we can exploit the theta dependence. So we parameterize tau theta in this way and we'll looked at a similar kind of derivative operator which should vanish by the modular invariance and looked at its consequence. In the interest of time, uh, I'd like to skip the details. I'd like to, uh, I, I, I do not go into too much detail, but the idea here is that, again, we would like to put bounds on this long DPS sector. This is the half DPS sector, the total DPS sector. These are completely fixed. fixed by Hodge number, and they're essentially fixed by the elliptic genius, modular or non generic situation. So then, we know that uh, this derivative operator acting on the total thing should be zero, this acting on the total thing should be zero when you evaluate at this number. But we can take some particular linear combination so that uh, this subset uh, can also be annihilated by differential operators. And if you do that, then the remaining part should also satisfy this kind of equation. And the interesting thing is that this coefficient can depend on the point number because it's A is determined by this equation. And uh, uh, for each representation, uh, you can have this kind of a, 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 a property. So we can exploit this property. So without going into detail, what we find is uh, that, uh, uh, so this is a horizontal, this horizontal axis is a total point number. And the vertical axis is, is denoted by this notation, but what it means is that uh, the, uh, the conformal dimension, delta plus delta bar, which, is, which is sort of upper bound, and you have to have operator below this bar. So this kind of uh, a bound can be expressed in terms of, uh, there are in terms of this, uh, uh, from this kind of analysis. Uh, I can explain in detail what, what we are doing, but probably it's not very illuminating to most of you, so let me not, not going into detail, but just end with one 
final graph, which probably summarizes what we have obtained. So I would like to explain what this diagram is. The horizontal axis of this diagram is a total coordinate, h1 1 plus h2 1. So for example, the, uh, the, in the recent work by Wazir Taylor, etc., uh, the maximum number of uh, elliptically fiber carabiao is somewhere here. It's over 500 for the H1. Oh, okay, so it's, it's more like here. Right? And uh, this blue line indicates the upper bound for the dimension of the lowest conformal plane of the uh, upper bound for the uh, So this is delta plus delta bar is one. So this is so this is the vacuum. This is where the vacuum representation is. This is where the first material BPS state is. So there are lots of uh, cases where uh, the first material non BPS state appears below this line. So generically, you see that when uh, the, uh, the, the, the total host number of carbonyl is less than something like the, the uh, 100. The mass of Higgs, then uh, uh, we start seeing that the non BPS state are the, uh, the dimension of the non BPS state are lower than the fast non trivial uh, 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 BPS state. And then they go, start going down, it looks like it's actually a simple to three quarter, but in fact it's very slow move, but it eventually goes down to uh, just one quarter. And the interesting thing is that density grows linearly so in, in this domain. So that, that means that there will be increasingly large number of non-BPS states going here. So what does it mean? Well, one can speculate what it means. Typically, what we know in conformal uh, theory with target space is that you start getting this kind of uh, dense low-line state, which are simple to the continuum. That happens when the size of the target space, the radius of the target space, grows. So one possible interpretation is that there is something like the minimum amount of volume has a complication of topology. So if you want to have a more and more complicated topology, maybe you need to grow the size of the area. I'm told that uh, that's something that happens in lower dimensional manifolds like two-dimensional Riemann surface or real three-dimensional manifold, that if you want to increase more and more sort of uh, the, 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 the topological invariants, then, then you need to forgive normalized hyperbolic volume, the size has to grow uh, in some way. And then, so maybe there is something like that for uh, a Calabria manifold, or maybe this is the indication of some pathological feature of Calabria manifold with large host number. And it's suggesting that indeed there must be a finite number of hyperbolic types. But uh, that's the total speculation. So, with that, I'd like to end. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. 
Oh, okay. Well, uh, this result does not tell you exactly how we do it. I can, uh, uh, because this is sort of uh, uh, based on the work. And uh, so, so I, can, I can say that uh, if you increase this, then there will be more. And I can give you ask, uh, exactly how many at 700, I should be able to tell you that there is at least, say, five or something like that. But, uh, but uh, also, there are uh, uh, exactly solved the cases, like Jupiter model or Oracle, for which one can try to check this. However, typically, those have a enhanced symmetry. So that might not be precisely along the line of this general. Thank you. 